I hope you like my hat, I wore it specially for you, but it is cold here. Now there's a popular myth that you need to use a wide angle lens to shoot landscapes and it isn't necessarily true because you can get a great effect with a long lens. So I just want to show you kind of what I'm thinking and how by changing lenses and moving your body just very, very slightly, you can have a big impact on your composition. And composition is really important. We've got a very dull grey day here. So we're over in Iceland doing the Iceland workshop. The guys are down there just sort of having a chat and doing a filter chain. So I thought I'd just use this opportunity to sort of tell you some stuff. Now, obviously over here we've got mountains with bits of snow. We've got a grey day, so composition is going to be really important. But we've got lots of grey. I like these grey rocks down here. And we've got these remains of this old wooden boat up against them. So we've got grey on grey on grey on grey with little hints of this sort of almost grey gold sort of grasses going on down here. So what's going on in my mind, the composition I'm thinking of, is boat in the foreground with the rocks and then mountains, grey sky, grey water, grey rocks going on, going on into the distance. So if I put my lens onto 24 millimetres, let's do a 24 mil shot and get fairly close. And I'm going to show you the difference of the same shot with a longer lens. So let's find my composition. I want to put this little pointy bit of wood at the top here. I want to line it up against the water so that it makes the prow of the boat really stand out as opposed to it being lost amongst the grey. So like bend the knees, let's find the place where I need to be at 24 mil. It's quite close. I've got to get quite in close here. There we go. A little closer, make it intimate, you know. Wide lenses are great for making things intimate and close. Here we go. So I'm going to focus on the boat itself. It's not far away depth of field, let's go for maximum depth of field. I'm just going to run to about f16, something like that. I need to make sure my shutter speed is fast enough, so I'm going to push my ISO higher, about 400 ISO. Let's see what we've got with the shot composed. That's giving me a 50th of a second with a 24mm lens, so I should be absolutely fine, no camera shake. Focus on the boat. So we've got front to back sharpness, with a wide angle shot. Let's just put the longer lens on and see what that does for the composition, for the feeling and the mood of the shot. I'll be back in a tick when I've changed lenses. Right, long lens on. I won't interfere with Nikki while she takes her shot. Okay, so much the same composition as we had before. So let's just check what I've had. That's something like that. What's going to happen, I want to bring those mountains over there a little closer in behind the boat. And I'm also thinking I want to really isolate the boat and the stonework. I want to bring that human element into the shot. You know, the sort of like the ruin of somebody's life with their boat and the stones, the little cairn and, and kind of the roughness of nature. But I really want the focus of the shot to be the boat and the human element. So how are we going to achieve that? Have a little think. This is all part of that composition. Well, I'm going to do it by having a shallow depth of field. I'm using the full frame with a 2.8 lens, so I'm going to actually take my lens wide open. I'm going to do everything which they say you shouldn't do in landscape, but it shouldn't. It's a rule. Is it real or is it not real? It's, you can do whatever you want to create what you want. So my vision needs a wide aperture, so 2.8. Let's just find where my composition is going to work. Uh, Nick can carry on shooting because she's not going to be in it. The long lens has a narrow field of view. Now, where do I bend my knees to? I don't want that little point that we looked at on the bow going above the horizon. That's nice. That's nice. And I want the mountain off to the right and the rocks in the foreground. That's pretty cool. I love that. That just kind of works. But you see how by absolutely focusing on the timber work of the boat, that man-made human element absolutely sort of smacks in amongst the natural stuff. And by using a shallow depth of field and a longer lens, we've brought the peaks in the distance in closer. Now, I'm not saying either one of these shots is right or wrong. Whichever you prefer is whichever you prefer. It's personal preference. It's almost a portrait photography technique to bring bokeh into landscape, but it gives it a really interesting look. And it's all, I say, it's part of the composition game because you're composing a picture. Speaking of which, that little spiky bit, one last thing over here. 
let's just have a little look at how we can change the composition and how important it is to look at aspects of the composition. I'm going to go for my shallow depth of field again, f2.8. Now I'm, I'm going to be shortening the lens a bit and I don't need such a small aperture, so I've got more light coming in. I'm going to take my ISO back down. Remember guys, push things up and down all the time, ISO higher, ISO lower. Absolutely great. And also, kind of be ready for the odd opportunistic shot. I love that, Nicky taking pictures. Okay, what I'm thinking now is a straight on shot, the bow of the boat, with some rocks in the foreground, the beach on the other side and the scree slope of the mountain with a little bit of that ice and snow coming down. It's a great shot, even though we haven't got any strong light, it's still gonna work. How we do it? Turn the camera that way up. Let's break some landscape rules. That's called landscape format, that's called portrait. So let's shoot a landscape in portrait. Let's just come up on the front of the boat. I don't know, about 70 millimeters I'm gonna use. And I want the front of the little boat to be sharp. So let's see where I need to be. Shutter speed's at 6, 4500 on 70 mil, so we should be fine. Line it all up, get the boat smack in the middle and my frame going up and down. There we go. Now, if I shoot this from here, get the beach lined up. It's, a, it's still a nice shot. I like having those mountain peaks and I like having the boat really, really sharp. You see how that little pointy piece on top of the boat is now colliding with the line of the stones on the beach. It's not quite so good. I want separation there. It's really important to study your composition. Really, really look at your pictures. Do it in the viewfinder, but also check it in the LCD. How am I going to move that? I want to put the beach higher. It's really, really simple. You can change the composition just by moving forward. That's all I've done. I move forward what? fraction of a pace, not even six inches, and just stretch a bit taller, line it all up, make sure everything's straight. I have the grid display on in my viewfinder so I can make sure everything's straight and nicely lined up when I shoot it. There we go. I've just climbed a little higher. I've got slightly fewer rocks in the foreground, but I've got that separation at the top between the little piece of wood on top of the boat and the beach on the other side. Composition is really important when you're shooting, particularly on a dull day, because it's one of the things you've got to rely on, and colour tones. And so in post-production, we're just kind of trying to maybe darken the sky a bit, just make these yellows a little tiny bit stronger than I'm seeing them in the back of the camera. Because don't forget, I'm shooting raw, and raw files always look dull. So we may need to just pimp that a tiny, tiny bit. But there you go. So there's one little fundamental about using a longer lens in the landscape. You don't just have to stick to a wide angle if you're shooting landscapes. I'm going somewhere warmer. Hawaii, maybe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos, or for more great photo tips, workshops, and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.